You probably recognize these ice cream pellets as the ice cream of the future. They're Dippin' Dots, a summertime staple. But this confectionery treat didn't start as, well, ice cream. It started as cow feed. Dippin' Dots were invented in the 80s, not by an ice cream brand, but by a microbiologist. Curtis Jones specialized in cryogenics. In 1987, he was working for a biotech company in Kentucky, trying to figure out how to make food for farm animals more efficient. His big breakthrough came when he flash froze cattle feed at 350 degrees below zero, which produced small pellets. Serendipitously, Curtis loved making ice cream. Mm. Next thing he knew, he was using liquid nitrogen to freeze ice cream at extremely low temperatures and ended up with small beads of it. When eaten, the natural heat of the mouth melted the beads and thus, Dippin' Dots was born. A year later, he formed the company out of his parents' garage in Illinois. But there was a problem. Curtis had nowhere to sell the product. Dippin' Dots need to be stored at such a cold temperature that it made it impossible for grocery stores to house the tasty treat. So he got creative and marketed his product to alternate locations. Now they're sold at amusement parks, festivals, zoos, and other summertime destinations. But whether or not they really are the ice cream of the future, we'll just have to wait and see. The Queen Amon is a specialty of northern France. Derived from the Breton words for butter and cake, the ratio for this pastry is special. It's buttery. In fact, it's 30% butter and 30% sugar. Welcome to Douarnenez, a city with a population of around 15,000. This small coastal town has a few main attractions, including touring the coastlines, visiting the Port Museum, and seeing the Chapelle of Saint Michel. But that's not why we're here. We are here to meet Thierry Luca, the man to talk to when you want a truly authentic Queen Amon pastry. The Queen Amon was invented in 1860 in Douarnenez. It's a gâteau that was born a little bit Legend goes, a baker ran out of goods in their shop and had to whip up something quickly. Comme it was a pâtissier, a boulanger, Qu'est-ce qu'il avait sous la main Il a pris la pâte à pain, il a pris du beurre, il a pris du sucre, il a mélangé les trois ingrédients et, et voilà comment est né le Queen Amon. The pastry has only a few simple ingredients, but don't let that fool you. C'est une pâtisserie assez difficile à faire euh, au début. Le véritable Queen Amon de Dornay est toujours fait à la main. On, donc on est à la pâte, on met le beurre, on met le sucre, on repose couvre cet ensemble de, de sucre et de beurre avec la pâte. Euh, je donne deux tours, comme on a vu, là, et ensuite je, ra je ramène les coins, et ensuite on rassemble les coins, et puis on met en bout. On fait une petite dorure au lait avant de mettre au four, qui va, qui va favoriser la caramélisation sur le dessus. Euh, J'ai appris à, à faire de cuillamande quand j'avais l'âge de 7-8 ans à peu près, parce que mon père était boulanger avant moi. J'ai euh, 54 ans maintenant. It's definitely a treat. Probably not something you'd eat every day. On pourrait le faire plus léger un peu quoi, mais c'est pas du tout dans les habitudes de Dwarnay. Voilà, à Dwarnay on le fait, on a gardé la recette traditionnelle. C'est un gâteau pour se faire plaisir. Voilà, voilà. De toute façon, tout ce qui est sucre, ça donne toujours une notion de plaisir. Voilà, c'est comme le chocolat. Voilà, une notion de plaisir par derrière. Not to have the last word, but obviously we tried it. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. And I think our face says it all. Mm. And also this spontaneous remark. Oh my god, that's so buttery. Ça, c'est le vrai Queen Amon de Douarnenez. Juste ici. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Whoa. Bikri, tu vois, les gens ont été bikri, ça les みんなからまだ売れてないんだよねって言われるんですけど色が白くて種が赤く手締めやすい人です。いちごを作っています。白い宝石というブランドの名前のいちごをで販売しています。ワンパック 
約4000円ほどで販売をしております白い宝石は基本的に、まあ、世の中に白いちごっていうのはたくさんあるんですけどその中でも格段に白くて大きい他に類を見ないちごですよ私以外の人は現状として作っていません栽培にあたってかなり難しい点と量,量的に普通のいちごと比較してもできないし白いいちごはよりよく白く作れば作るほど果実のこすれ傷ともに赤よりも目立ってしまいますので製品になる確率は10分の1ぐらいに減ってしまいますちょっと高価なイチゴになってしまいますいろ色形サイズともにトータルバランスで優れたイチゴです味も立派なイチゴだと思います意外とこうなんていうかな奥深いようなインパクトはないんだけどずっとこう不思議な感じで美味しいっていうような感じですもんね白い宝石で作り始めてもう約4年白いイチゴ作りで楽しいこと幸せを感じることは自分が想像できない味香りそして形っていうのがうまくできてくるのをよく私自身が実感できるからですいや目指すところはいちごで他の果物の味がするとか甘いとか美味しいとかお客さんに絶対このいちごは間違いないと言われるまで突き進むしかないですね。Everybody loves ice cream. Even those who say they don't like ice cream still love ice cream. We use ice cream as a way to support our community. My name is Michael Mikey Cole, and I own Mikey Likes and Ice Cream. I did not always sell ice cream. I was born in the Lower East Side of New York City, East Village, two blocks from the shop. I was selling drugs at one point. I ended up getting caught. I ended up going to jail for six months. A few years ago, my mother got sick. I promised to her that I wouldn't be locked up anymore and do the wrong things. Ice cream was something that just came into my life at a time when I didn't really know what I was kind of doing. This is. Pop culture inspired ice cream. We have Jack and Jill, Trouble Shuffle, Ice Ice Baby, Pink Floyd, Mint Condition, Southern Hospitality, and we have Smooth Operators. A bunch of famous people have come by here. Future's a fan, Joaquin Noah's a fan, Hillary Clinton's a fan. We have a lot of other fans out there as well. Good, good. All right, fellas, good, good. I still live two blocks from the store. Part of our job is to still be heavily in the community. And so if kids come in here with an A on their report card, we give them a free scoop of ice cream. It's to show them that we are the same as them. So I'm just a little older, but I'm still the same child at heart. And if you can find something that you like and you're passionate about, go for it and just go for it. You know, don't, don't not go for your dreams, go for every last one that you have. At the end of World War II, the Soviets were holding Berlin under siege. In order to save millions of people from starvation, the US and allies devised a plan to airlift in food. One American pilot decided to take it a step further. He delivered candy. My name is Gail Halverson, but I'm known as the Berlin Candy Bomber. I didn't think that the airlift would last very long. So I thought I'd better get a movie of this operation before they send me home. One day, while filming the planes taking off and landing, Gail became aware that there was some young children watching him. He went over to talk to them, and after a while, he realized, Dummy, don't you know kids like chocolate? And I knew that they had not had chocolate in the stores in Berlin for two years. And I reached in my pocket, and I, all I had 
was two sticks of Wrigley's Double Mint Gum. And I broke the two sticks in half, gave it to the kids, and, and the kids with a half a stick tore off the wrapper into thin strips and passed it to those without gum. And those who re received the wrappers put it up their nose and smelled a piece of wrapper. Inspired by their generosity, he decided that next flight, he would drop them chocolate and candy via parachute from the plane. They said, how do we know what, what airplane you're in? And so I said, when I come over the airfield, I'll wiggle the wings of that big airplane. And they said, oh, great. True to his word, the next day, Gail began to drop the packages. What started with just two sticks of gum eventually turned into 23 tons of chocolate. So from then on, I was known in the press and all the kids in Berlin, that's Uncle Wiggly Wings. And in case you were wondering if the candy bomber still has a sweet tooth. Oh yeah, I still eat chocolate. I like dark chocolate. <laughs>